This is Martin Giles, uh, the Guildford Dragon News. And I'm now with uh, Council Leader Joss Bigmore of GBC and also uh, Conservative Councillor David Bilby, who represents Normandy. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for giving your time to the Guildford Dragon. Good morning, Martin. Good morning. Good morning. Now, I've uh, asked for this interview to follow up on some of your comments just last week about the impact uh, of the national political situation on local politics. And you were saying that you felt it had a direct impact and, uh, and you were, your evidence was what you, the messages you were receiving uh, in your mailbag and, and through other uh, media. Um, David, can I ask you, do you feel that, that the current situation at national level is impacting on local politics? Um, well, there's a couple of things I'd say to that, Martin. Uh, firstly, of course, not being on the executive of the council, um, I mean, I follow matters closely and in as much detail as I can, but I may not be quite as close to some of the precise details which the leader and the executive of the council are privy to. Uh, and that's, that's just a statement of fact. But coming more to your question, uh, for me, I, I've always seen um, a distinct um, gap, difference, between what happens at the national level, although it does, of course, it has impact, you know, whether it's around, you know, the take uh, and the issue of housing stock, you know, what happens in terms of public set of finance, I accept all that. But generally speaking, I've always seen um, little close relationship between what happens at the national level and the local level. Now, of course, there are differences. The last thing I'd say um, around that, just to warm up here, is that it's how the voting public see things and how their perception of party political issues translate into what they put on their cross in the ballot box. Um, so, but at a technical level, I see them as quite, I've never really been a fan of local politics in um, uh, national politics in local issues. Okay, but are, are you getting any feedback of dissatisfaction uh, with with your party's leadership at the national election, uh, sorry, at the national well, level. Well, well, thank you, Martin, for calling it my party. Um, <laughs> I didn't realise I'd been promoted, but well, you, um, are I am a, you are a member. You are a member. I'm a member, but I can hardly claim ownership. Okay. Um, um, and I would remind, I would remind you that um, you know. Um, two elections ago, I actually stood as an independent and it was ejected from the Conservative Party. And I think that, um, you know, for a period of four years before I came back, that's because I, for me personally, I believe that local issues should always transcend national issues. And I saw a lot of matters that were not being dealt with at the local level that I felt needed some invigoration. So, um, no, I... I uh, as my party, do I think that it's um, do I think it's having um, a significant effect on our ability to do our jobs as councillors at local level? No, I don't. Okay, well let's let's go to Just. Just, can you just reiterate the the kind of uh, the evidence you have and the the messages you've received that that made you uh, say those things last week? Yeah, I, I think it's you know the the, the tone of emails, um, lack of trust, um, a separation from. Um, you know, a feeling that that, that councillors and, and council officers and, and government of, at all levels is somewhat detached from residents and kind of not not abiding by the same rules. And it's just it's just a question of leadership. It's not a political issue. I mean, I'm sure that members of the Labour Party had just as many issues under Jeremy Corbyn. It's just you know the, you know that that I think you know we we kind of lead and we make difficult decisions and without without the public at least trusting that you may, they may not agree with the decision, but at least they, they trust that it's been considered, um, you know, given all the available evidence. And, you know, me and David will disagree about, for example, the budget, about about some of the choices we made versus what he may have chosen. But, it, but you know, we gave all of those arguments an airing and we made the decisions. And as David said, ultimately, the public will make the decision at the ballot box. But I just, I, I, I really don't like the kind of change in tone of email or complaint you know it's even little things like and, and you know I'm still relatively new to this and I'm sure you know David's experience on on the executive will, will say that emails have always been of a slightly aggressive tone um you know and, and but but I certainly you know in the midst of the pandemic where it felt like we were all in this together 
you know, people praising council services, and it's not praising councillors. It's more that it's more that it's more kind of the officers get get tarnished by by some of this as well. To now, if someone misses a bin collection, it's like you know, what why, why do these people that are overpaid? They need to come back on overtime in their own time to do this. And it's like kind of quite unreasonable things that that, that people are suggesting, and it and it's just. It, it's just not a particularly pleasant environment. No, it, it, you, you mentioned, I think, if I can, if I recall correctly, you said that you were getting messages that you know, grouping all politicians together, you're all the same, yeah. you're all useless, and yeah. also even that you're all on the take, and that people were saying yeah. you're getting brown envelopes. Exactly. Well, there's, I mean, there's always that with every planning application. It's the councils on the. But, but is it different page, now? It's, because it's, in, it's 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 increasing, in my opinion, okay. at the moment, and I, and I, and I think that's that's something. You know, I I you know I can I can take it. My wife doesn't particularly like it, but it's you know I do it, I do worry about about the kind of the you know when when you get a planning application or you get an enforcement decision, if there is no trust from the residents to the people that are making that professional opinion. Then the whole system starts to break down, and we don't get me wrong—we're a long way from that. But we're—but the, you know, it's not a nice environment at the moment. Okay, David, a couple of things there. Firstly, it's not—it's not good for any anyone, is it? That if if there is if that trust between—I mean, we know that it's never at a high level, perhaps between the public and politicians, um, but there does need to be an some trust that. The politicians are trying to do the, at least trying to do the right thing, and they're not in it just for themselves, doesn't there? Or the system breaks, doesn't it? Well, I think you could say that about any system, really, Martin. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah you and, can, but and, and, we're talking about you know, this. We are, we are, but sorry, that's that's moving from the general to the specific, of course, but you know. Of course, that's 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 a statement that one absolutely cannot disagree with. You know, if trust and confidence breaks down, but. I think I'd like to step back from this a second because, you know, at the local level where I sit, I'm going to represent 2,300 um, voting residents in Normandy, roughly 1,300 houses. And I can tell you that, you know, I, I certainly never took on this role um, to be praised for anything. I don't expect that. It's just not in my psyche nor have any expectation. But people that I know, because I remember when, before Joss was elected, he said to me, you know, David, what's your take on being elected? And I said, well, I always think that, you know, have an issue, get a bike and get a dog. And the reason I say that is because if you get around and get to know people, they will get to know you. And of course, people are always going to be tarnished by these big perceptions. You know, we've had it with the Labour Party with anti-Semitism. We've had, you know, um, affairs and, and, and difficult issues among the Liberal Democrats. We've got this current stuff that's going on through Downing Street. Nobody can take any pride in that. Nobody. I've never worked in Downing Street, so I can't actually be a, an expert on what might or might not have happened in that rather rarefied atmosphere of running our country. But what I would say is that at the local level, for me personally, people say, David, we respect you. You know, they don't go as far as say they like me because I don't expect that. But, you know, but we res respect what you've done for our village. You fight for us. You will work hard for us. And the, the big brush that gets slapped all over this, and we had exactly the same thing in the last elections, because the reason, in my view, that Conservatives got absolutely pummeled was Brexit and the local plan. You know, those are the real reasons. And yet the day after the Brexit vote was taken, the most vis visited web website in, um, I think, in living history, apart from the War Memorial website, is what's, what is the European Union? You know, and now people are bemoaning the fact that we've got all sorts of problems because of Brexit. So yeah. these these waves will come and go. That's what I'm saying. But, but at the local Brexit level... Was, if Brexit was a factor in that election, then the national what's happening at the national level does affect the way not everyone because we know that for some people at the last local election the local plan was the main issue and perhaps a decisive one but for a lot of people brexit was the issue and so I, I, therefore my, there I, is I, a I, crossover I, isn't there between what's going on and what do you if, if one of your constituents in, in normandy says to you david what's your view of what's going on at the top of your party how do you answer them well first i'd say again it's not my party i'm a member of it um but second, I would say, if you're asking me as an individual, I'll give you my individual view. OK, if you ask me what I would do if I were prime minister, I'd give you that view. 
But in terms of what it does um, for my role as a local councillor, to be honest, it has little effect apart from apart from whether people see the real issues. I mean, for example, this morning I heard on the news, the economy in the UK has grown by over 7% in the last 12 months. That's the largest gro growth of any um, Western economy. I think of many, or even globally, it's a huge growth rate. Now that will have a massive positive effect on jobs, taxation, investment, and so forth. Now, in time, Will, it, will, it, will it really have a massive effect like that? Do you think the people that are in the lower 10% um, of, of wealth in, in Guildford Borough are going to be massively impacted by that statistic? No, I, no Martin, I, I can't speak for individuals in the bottom 10% of wealth. All I'm saying is a, a, a big, a large growth in the economy, a growing economy, is good for the country. Because if you've got more money and you're creating more taxation, you can put more money into public services and where people you know, need to have investment. And it relies there. on That's how it's distributed, saying. doesn't it? Yeah, well, look, well, let's think, get to talk to Michael Gove about that because he's okay. the Minister for Levelling Up. All right, you well, know? Uh, let, let's just, I, I want to ask my next question now then. So what about the influence the other way? One of the things that um, your co colleagues in, in the Conservative uh, group uh, in Guildford say is that, you know, because they're in the same political party as those at the top, they can exercise more influence over them and, and, and get more decision. Well, you're grimacing, but that is what is said by some people. So do you not agree with that? Well, sorry, I didn't mean to grimace there. I just it's a tricky question. I personally have seen little evidence of that. You know, I think the only area where I would have thought it would have impact is if you want to have access via you know, your elected MP, because remember, not all of the MPs around Guildford are Conservative. Most of them are. <coughs> but all of the ones if you wanted Surrey, to have... Uh, are there any exceptions? I can't... You've not, got not in Surrey, no. no, I'm sorry. So, you know, does that help to get access at the ministerial level? Well, it could. But what are you going to do? You're going to go and see, um, you know, the, the, the Minister for Local Government and say, we don't like the way you're taking too much money out of the coffers of all councils across the country. Oh, great. Thanks for telling me that. I'll do something about it. No, it doesn't work like that. Government set policy. Government are the supreme body in this country. They set the law. They set the Local Government Act or its amendments through instruments. And we have to abide by them. If we want access to lobby, I mean, I've lobbied Jonathan Lord, my MP, many times. And Jonathan has raised questions in the House on behalf of Normandy. I've heard, I've heard them. That helps, you know. But then again, you'd say, well, if I had a Labour MP or, you know, heaven forbid, a Liberal Democrat in, in Normandy, would they do the same for me? Probably not, because I'm a Conservative. You know, they might do it for one of their Liberal Democrat elected people, but not for me. Okay, but I've well, seen little evidence. To defend themselves, but anyway. Okay, but so and, I, just, and I'm not attacking them, Martin. <laughs> okay, but just, if you um, you're obviously you don't have representation political as a political party at the, at the national level, or even uh, yeah, you do at county council level, and you have said in some statements that you you you're working with Tim Oliver as the county council leader, and you know the impression it gives is that actually you have a good working relationship with him. I hope I'm not misrepresenting that would you agree with that um i'd like to think so i mean it's the nature of but let me just finish the question then so do you okay, feel sorry. that something's missing because you you haven't got i mean you you've I obviously you can speak to angela richardson but do you think you have less influence because you're not in the same party as her i i i mean the nature of politics in surrey at the moment is that there's a huge mix of of representation at all the different levels. So you have to work together for the good of the residents. And I think MPs, the county councillors, borough councillors, all parties realise that to get anything done, I mean, the Conservatives now don't have a majority of leaders at borough level. They obviously have a majority at county council and they are have every MP in the county. So, you know, we have to work together because all layers of government needs to work together at the moment to actually deliver anything for the residents, which is what we all want to do. And, you know, I, I haven't experienced any negative campaigning against anything we want to do you have a chat about it if you if it if it's you know your shared objectives and you want to work on it together we do um 
me, me and Angela agree on a great many things. We disagree on other things. I think like to think I have a good relationship with with Tim Oliver. Um, you know, and there's a, a lot of things we've worked together, and we will continue to work together in in Guildford Borough because I mean they are the education authority, the highways authority. We can't really do anything without the county council, and it's incumbent on me as a leader to build relationships across the political spectrum. I mean, you know. The, I, I regularly have lunch with Councillor Spooner. Councillor Manning was extremely helpful when I was when I was lead councillor for finance, having taken the portfolio from him. It's not it's not all um, kind of but, um, jewels at dawn between the political parties at the local level. Obviously, there are things that we will have a real go at each other about in 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 council. But it's the nature of a coalition and the fact that at local level, you well, know, I'm we not, are sorry, just but I'm not clear. Your, what your answer is are you saying that you would have more influence if the if you were represented at a national level or it I doesn't matter well it doesn't I, I i mean if if residents for guildford and villages would have one mp it would count for nothing i mean obviously you know if you're a conservative one would think you would have more influence at a national level um given the strength of the conservative majority however you know we we did have and take angela richardson you know i think she's trying to do the right things She's compromised now, resigning from Michael Goh's parliamentary secretary, which I assume is on a point of principle. Um, and so we kind of lose influence in a very important, you know, uh, department that the minister, you know, the, for levelling up communities. And, you know, but Andrew is do, probably doing the right thing, in her opinion, for the residents of the borough. So it's not all it's, it's not an easy decision, but I have not I have not had any issue working with any conservatives at any layer of, of, of government whether they'd have been slightly nicer had i been a conservative maybe but but by I, I haven't noticed that but i go out of my way to try and build relationships you know with, with people across the political spectrum because it's the only way you can manage a coalition okay so i think what you're saying is it doesn't matter that much i i don't i have not 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 in my experience and i can only speak from my experience Okay. As you know, Martin, I'm a very reasonable, likeable guy. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. Martin, could I just make a brief comment there, if you don't yeah, mind? Yeah, please do. But, uh, okay, but along, on the same question, please. Yeah, it is It is along the same question, actually. I think it's pertinent and relevant. Uh, Joss asked me at the outset of the uh, preliminaries to be nice to him, but this is not going to be quite so nice. Um, fine words, in my opinion, from Joss, and you know, he's right at, at one level. Of course, one has to work as closely as one can together. And I cast my man back almost a year to when Normandy Parish Council fell apart and I chaired um, an interim council of Lib Dem, um, R4GV and GGG, and we worked as people. But the one thing that I find a little galling about that comment is that there are 10 conservative councillors with a lot of experience, I personally have run three American banks in the city of London. I have an MBA, I have finance experience, I'm a barrister, and yet nobody like me is on the executive because we're excluded. We're excluded by virtue of this coalition agreement with the Lib Dems. So fine words, but if you want to work with people, make it work at every level. Well, that's not really addressing the question, is it, about whether th th there's influence upwards from a, um, from a party from the local level up to national level because it is something that when it comes to an election some of your um conservative colleagues do say is an advantage in in having a conservative councillor that they do their roots of communication upwards and their influence is more than other parties while the conservatives are in power at government level that is the truth isn't it that is what they say some of them anyway um, you sound like you're cross-examining me there. That that is the truth. Um, well, I'm, if you like, would you answer? <laughs> you're leading me there, Martin. You're leading. You're leading the well, question. Well, I'm asking you. I mean, um, you can disagree. I, I do disagree. I do disagree with that. Well, you don't think well, people do claim I, that. I, I, I can say I've not seen any evidence of it. I have seen no evidence of it. Of course, a Conservative Party at a national level if in government, would wish to see every council in this country run by a conservative majority. Of course they would. You know, they want the vibrancy and spread of, of um, acceptance from the voting public about the importance of the conservative ethos, values, principles, and therefore their party. Well, of course, we haven't got that. 
we've got this schism at the moment where we've got a conservative government, as you say, conservative MPs in Surrey, but a smattering of councils that are not all run by conservatives. So, but I haven't seen any evidence of that. I mean, I see it more it going to come from the top down than the bottom up, to be honest. You know, you really think that because we've got a conservative Guildford Borough Council, that somehow that's going to make the government more electable. Well, there's not much evidence of that because we lost the last election in Guildford. We lost the majority. And yet Boris Johnson secured a reasonable majority. So how can anybody explain that to me? Yeah, that, that, that's a good point. Um, right. So the, my final question then is, presuming you intend to stand at the next uh, Borough Council election, if you were disassociated with your party, if you stood as a, a complete independent, independent of any party, do you think it would affect your chance of being elected in 2023? David, to you first. Well, I have first-hand experience of that, Martin, because, you know, three elections ago, not one, two elections ago, I actually did exactly that. I mean, in Normandy, there was a 650 conservative majority. I stood as an independent. I did my own boards, my own campaign. My wife was my agent. I had to choose purple because I couldn't choose yellow. I couldn't choose blue or red. And I lost by 1-3, 13 votes. And I remember being told, being kicked out of the party, being told, independence, no chance. Well, to me, that tells me that people care more about local issues and their village and how they position within the bigger scheme than they care about whether um, I'm a member of a Conservative Party or not. Now, it helps because when I came back as a Conservative, I came in with a majority of 700. But it shows that you can do it as an independent because that's what but people you didn't care do about. But you didn't do it. 13 is not bad, though, Martin. No, no I, I completely yeah. agree. You nearly did it, but you didn't. And and people could say the critical factor was your membership of the Conservative Party. No, the critical factor was the, the postal votes because I didn't have a machine to deal with okay. the postal vote thing. Because on the table vote, I'd won it hands down. Everybody was slapping my back at the count and congratulating me, looking forward to working with me. And then when the postal votes were counted, I lost it. <laughs> okay. All right. So, Joss, what about you? I mean, you're a member of a party. I know it um, regards itself perhaps as an amalgamation of independent people, but nonetheless, it is a party. It's a re you know properly registered party. If you weren't part of that party and you stood in 2023, do you think you'd stand as much chance? Um, as, as, as a pure independent or as a, an independent, as a, as a member yeah, as of a an pure independent, independent As a pure independent. Um, I really don't know the answer to that question. I don't know. I think, I think um, David is right. At a local level, you can do a lot as an individual if you go out and meet people and knock on doors. Mm -hmm. However, I do think that the first thing someone looks at on a voting slip is whether it's the tree or the rose or the, or mm. hopefully the big G um, when they vote and then they go to the name second. So I do think the, the you know, I don't really want to speak for the average person, but I, I, I certainly know from my experience when I wasn't as politically aware as I am now, if I looked at a local election um, voting, I nearly said betting slip there, voting slip, um, I would always go party, then individual, because it's impossible to know all of the individuals. However, you can make a very good case as an individual by going around speaking to people and being really aware of the, the local issues on the ground, and you can make a real difference, as, as, as David has shown. Um, I think the experience of the last election where we had Tony Ruth, Bob McShee, uh, Colin Cross, that were all changed parties to us and still won quite healthy, healthily against um, their pr their previous parties, kind of shows that, that the name, the individual name is quite important at a local level. Okay, so I, I, less so, I think it becomes less so at a national level. Um, I, would, I would, would just like to, to, to counter David's comments about, about working in coalitions. And, and he makes a very good point about Normandy Parish Council. Um, and, and to be fair to myself, Paul Spooner wanted to be part of that, which would kind of alter the balance. Um, and I did manage to get that accepted by everyone in the group. So I think I did, I did, I did my best there to, to try and, um, you know, get, get the best outcome. And I think it was a very good, a very good example that it brings up. But I think, you know, there, there I certainly dis disadvantaged the, uh, the Conservatives um, by, by managing to broke getting Paul onto that, because as you can imagine, he's, controversial amongst 
some elements of the council. Um, I also think as well, you know, at the start of uh, immediately following the election, our position to the Liberal Democrats was we think it should be a rainbow coalition. But they made it very clear that they didn't want to work with the Conservatives. You know, there's a lot of history there. And then we have to make a choice is what is the most stable arrangement? And that was us and the Liberal Democrats having, you know, in the mid 30s of seats. And that and so it was a pragmatic decision. But okay. our starting position was, you know, we maybe we should look at a rainbow coalition. And we revisit that again a year later when 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 the current deal was done. So, I mean, it's not something that I'm against. Okay. And I think you know, the, the, the probably let me just, the let me just outcome... interrupt there because I do, I do I do want to uh, get this uh, interview. We're, we're we're going on a bit now. So. Um, Sorry, I've, I've struggled to get a word in it. Well, I, well uh, I, I, I just, I'm afraid that's how it appears. So, so um, if we accept that, you know, I mean, it is complicated. People have all different reasons for voting the way they do. But if we accept that there is some influence uh, of the national situation, because I mean, widely it is accepted. When, when there's a local election, people look at it as a measure however inaccurate of the of the standing of the of the national parties uh, and I, and it seems it seems true that there is a, you know some influence there in the way people vote but if that is the case and and uh, associated with that if the general perception of politicians is is colored by behavior at the national level what can be done to counter that to, to try, because it's engagement in local politics, I believe is important. Um, and yet we have, you know, quite low turnouts, relatively speaking. Um, so what can be done to help people realize that they can, through their votes, make a difference and that the councillors, when they make their choice, you know, if they, if they choose good people from whatever party, they should be able to help improve things in their board, borough or whatever. What, what measures can we do to try and reinstate that or to improve the trust? Who would you like to comment on that? Joss, you go first. Um, it's, it's, to be honest, it's the old fashioned campaigning, isn't it? It's knocking on doors. It's going out, communicating with people and showing them that their votes do make a difference. I mean, I, I very conscious, as you say, to, I mean, I, I don't know whether our local election turnouts are, are low if you look internationally or by history or whatever. Um, but but well, there you are know, about fifty percent. You know, half the people are not voting. Yeah, but only only sixty percent vote in national elections, don't no, they? No, I mean, not, I I'm not saying that's you know, good either. It's, but I'm... it's it's that. But that but that again is is a you know an engagement with the young is very important. I think if you look demographically, you know that 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 kind of you know engagement with with young people in local politics is 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 close to nil so therefore the decisions that get made i can understand why people feel disenfranchised but at the end of the day if you don't vote you don't get your representation that you want so i mean that 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 is and you see and we, our party are not very good at it but most saturdays the conservatives the liberal democrats are out knocking on doors telling people that and i think that's you know that that's what you need to do is that old-fashioned just going out there and telling people and communicating and and that's you know, people, parties spend a lot of money, social media, this, that, all trying to get that message out. But that that also the success of that is reliant on the, the trusting that the system works and that people are representing your best interests. And you and you can understand, you know, when, why people get disenfranchised. OK. And David, what do you say to that? I'll be brief on this, Martin. I think I think it comes down to two things. Number of course, number one, of course, is the quality of the candidates who stand. You know, I can't do much about people's apathy or the fact that they've had it up to the back teeth with them, um, politicians, their standards, what they see in the national press. But I think what it all comes down to, really, is leadership. You know, would would that person or those people lead in a way that represents the standards which we can all take pride in? You know, it's about leadership, really. So when you put that vote on that piece of paper, you're putting somebody in who's going to represent your village, you as an individual, your town, whatever. And I would just as an aside, draw a difference between, you know, the villages and town centre. There are different perspectives on that. It's much more important to be out and about in a village. I'm not saying it's not important to be out and about in the town, but it's harder when you're spread out. Mine is a very diverse, spread out village. 
but it comes down to leadership. Would that person, would those people lead me in a way in which if I talk to my friend from Spain, I would say I'm in the UK and we've got a conservative government and I feel a sense of pride about that or the council is led by a conservative or anybody at any other party do I feel that I can actually feel good about that? So that vote is really not just for the person, it's also a vote for leadership and principle. And I think there's work to be done there, to be honest, I do. Okay. Gentlemen, thanks very much. That was a lively debate. Uh, I enjoyed it. I hope it was uh, enjoyable yeah, to yeah, the readers you. when they, they watch it. And uh, I hope that, that sometime in the future I'll be interviewing you again. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Martin. Thanks, Josh, and thank yeah, thanks, Cheers, Josh. Thanks, Martin. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Bye. 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 Bye.